Welcome to Morphosource 2.0. We're so excited that launch day is finally here. Since 2017, we have been working to refactor the 3D data repository Morphosource, based at Duke University, into a Hyrax preservation stack with generous support from NSF and Duke University. Along the way, we've received tons of great help from museums, researchers, library archivists, developers, and many others. And we could not have done it without everyone's help, support, and goodwill. In this short orientation video, I will speak about how to access the different functions of Morphosource 2.0 so you can get right back to using it. Though this product is light years beyond the original platform, it still may feel a little strange at first, and there's bound to be some frustrating bugs. Please stick with us. If it's not love at first sight, we are confident you'll grow to love it over time. I'd like to begin by emphasizing some of the new features you'll want to take advantage of, as well as some of the unfinished pieces we'll need your patience on. New features include faceted searching and more powerful browsing, as well as 3D interactive viewing of color meshes and CT scan volumes for the first time. Furthermore, there are no more media groups in Morphosource 2, just derivative chains. We also now richly support metadata for a variety of modalities beyond CT scans. Of course, these are again just a few highlights of the many new features in Morphosource 2. With regard to in-progress items, first, for the next week or so, you will still find a lot of media with no preview available. 3D derivatives, while cool, were actually one of the least critical parts of our migration process, and so had to wait for priority until the end but in about a week, they should mostly be done. Also, keep in mind that just because the preview isn't there doesn't mean you can't download the original data file. As another heads up, when you log in and go to your user dashboard, you won't yet see any info on your previous download activity during Morphosource 1. You also won't see any information about requests you may have approved or denied if you're a contributor or data manager during Morphosource 1. That info is actually coming in the future, so just be patient. Next, we do not yet have our new API or data reporting tools in place, and it could be a while before they're running again. If you need something related to these services in the meantime, please contact us directly. Likewise, our new batch uploading protocol is not yet ready. We do have a semi-manual process that we may be able to support you with if it's really critical. So again, just contact us and we can discuss your needs. A new set of services that Morphosource 2 can offer is more flexibility and power of project management with user teams. In a couple weeks, we'll make some more team and project tools available. For instance, you may want to distribute your data projects among various teams that you create. We can't do that just yet, but it's coming soon. Finally, you may notice that some pages take a while to load, and that can be frustrating. After adding the full database into the repository, some pages became very slow. And we are still working our way through identifying these problem pages and refactoring them where necessary. Don't hesitate to notify us of slow or non-responsive pages. And speaking of that, of course, there are likely to be lots of bugs, so if you think you see any, let us know. This orientation will just cover the basics. A lot of things will work just like before, and I won't cover them in this tutorial. For instance, the specimen search portals, the process for selecting publication settings on your media, or for requesting DOIs will all be the same. Today, I want to cover basic home page navigation, faceted searching, browsing, what collection pages are, what's in the user dashboard, and how to contribute data. Now, when I say how to contribute data, you'll see I really just mean where to find the buttons to start submission workflows. You may be able to work most of the rest out from there, but we will supply other tutorials specifically about the submission workflow in the near future. 
here's what the home page looks like. Let me highlight some things for you. First note that we are still in the process of updating the about, documentation, and resources pages here. So if they look empty or incomplete, that's why. If you want to explore data flexibly and quickly across the whole database, the best place to go is probably the search page. Note here that you can search by different record types, including media, physical objects, organizations, or projects and teams. Alternatively, you can browse. The browse options look similar. For media types and modalities, physical object types, and biological taxonomy, these are essentially pre-filtered searches. The project, team, and organization browse pages are, however, more richly curated pages. If you want to review what functions each of these browse categories supports, you can click the Want to Find Data tab. And if you want to load data, you'll need to become a contributor, if not already. Before we will consider requests for new contributors, you must register a general user account with Morphosource under the Login button. If you go to the search page, you can either enter a term at the top of the screen or use any of the left-hand categories to filter and facet your search results by. As part of the migration of Morphosource 1 data, we have labeled all 143,000 data sets according to their file type and imaging modality using controlled terms, and you can facet by this information now. Other basic features you can facet media by include object type, including biological specimen or cultural heritage object, organization or museum ownership of the physical specimen, and project or team membership of the media. Perhaps you know off the bat that you're only interested in mesh files as a file type and photogrammetry as a modality. You can click on mesh and then go down to modality, expand it, and click on photogrammetry. A fun thing happens with the facets if you choose a term. Let's try Megalodon and see what happens. You can see that the results are filtering by Megalodon now, and that there are 25 total results. I've expanded by faceting categories, and now I can see the categoric distribution of the results. In this case, it's pretty monotonous. Type shows me that there are only mesh files associated with the term Megalodon. Modality shows me that all the results for Megalodon are from CT scans. Object type shows me that, not surprisingly, none of these specimens were cultural heritage objects. And finally, all these scans come from the University of Florida Museum of Paleontology. Now try searching by physical object or organization and see what that's like. I believe the particular browse pages that add the most over just faceted searching are the biological taxonomy, organizations, and projects browse pages. Now the biological taxonomy browse page is pretty straightforward and I'm not really going to explain it at all in this presentation. The organization and project browse pages are similar and both represent browse pages for different kinds of collections and are reviewed here. The organization browse page is what I'm showing right now. A couple of tips. The default pagination of both these pages is set to 10 results. Scroll down and increase it to 1,000 right away. On the project's browse page, increase it to 500. Next, be aware that when you search, only the organization name is going to be queried. A more flexible way of searching the full browse page is actually to simply hit Control F and type the keywords you think should be in the title. This will get you to the organization or project faster in many cases. As a cool addition to Morphosource 2, you can also see how many media and objects each organization has. Remember, there can be several scans, or media, for any given object. So media is almost always higher than objects in number. Finally, this organization list also includes scanning facilities. Right now, scanning facilities are always listed as having zero media and objects. 
We will be updating these soon to reflect all the media created by each facility. Next, I'll show you what comes up when you click on one of these organization pages. When you land on an organization or project page, you can see things like the parent institution name and the number of media and specimens in the project or organization. The default landing page is on the Media tab. You can view things about media like the specimen it pertains to and its accessibility status. You could also view a list of specimens on this page or learn more about the organization or project on the About tab. After you have created an account and logged in, you will see a little person icon in the upper right. If you click this, you'll see Dashboard as an option. Click on Dashboard and it will take you to your user dashboard. The different functions of the user dashboard are in the left-hand column here. Right now I'm on the Media and Objects tab of the user dashboard. You can tell because the page has the same title as the left-hand tab. The Media and Objects page shows all the media you have management, editor, or view access to. It will only be populated for contributors. I'll mostly let you explore the user dashboard for yourself, but as a heads up, you can expand the activity section to review and or edit your user profile. You can even add your ORCID ID, Twitter handle, or Facebook accounts here now. The download section includes the media cart for batch downloading media that you've pinned during your searches, a request center where you can batch submit requests for access to restricted data sets, which is a new feature in Morphosource 2, and a previous download section where you can see and search a list of media that you've downloaded before. This request section is only for users who have contributed and shared data with restricted download status, such that it needs to be managed. You can go here to review and approve, deny, or clear requests for files from other users. Finally, the last thing I want to emphasize in this orientation is where to upload new files. This is, of course, only relevant to contributors. Uploads can be accomplished through any of the repository contents pages. Again, we are on the Media and Objects page, and you can see the button for adding new media. This will take you into the media submission workflow. Note that this process is fundamentally different from the Morphosource 1 uploading protocol in at least one important way. In Morphosource 1, you had to navigate to a project and then add media via a specimen within that project. In Morphosource 2, you specify the specimen and the project membership details after you start the submission. There will be more tutorials describing these processes, but give it a try in the meantime and send us your questions. Thanks for your attention during this video and your interest in Morphosource. We hope you enjoy it. Feel free to send us your questions, comments, and remember, report any bugs you find at morphosource.duke.edu. At